If you would like to support the channel, then please turn off adblock and refresh the page. Alternatively, use the link in the description below to donate to T1 Patreon. Thank you. Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf, here with a quick deck tech for you, Scarab Gifts. Modern Scarab Gifts. So, the gifts part of it is what we need to start with first. This is Gifts Ungiven. Whoa, that glare. Uh, very simply, search your library for four cards with different names, reveal them, target opponent chooses two of these cards, put the chosen cards in your grave and the rest in your hand, then shuffle your library. Admittedly, this was almost certainly meant to be a value card where you would cast it, and your opponent would give you the two least valuable cards of the four you give them, but you'll still be going up two. That's probably how it was meant to be done. In this deck, though, we have another game plan. So, of course, Gifts Ungiven is going to be a four of, and they are going to go and get a particular package. Now, usually, the way this deck is set to work, you'll always have one of your cards, one of your two, yes, two. So, it, <laughs> Gifts Ungiven does say... You get four cards, but you can just simply fail to find, and lo and behold, you can only get two then. Alright, so, Unburial Rites is one of them. This is your reanimate card. Uh, five mana in the hand, but four in the yard. And then you use it to reanimate, oh, let's say, <laughs> depending on the match, you have Iona, Shield of Emeria, and Elishnorn, Grand Cenobite. Now, the former shuts off a color entirely, and so certain decks cannot win from that point. Certain other decks can't win off of El from Elish Norn because it has this minus two, minus two here. So depending on what you're going up against, say, uh, a Storm deck would hate to see Iona, whereas Hate Bears would hate to see Elish Norn, etc. And that'll just depend on what the match itself is, as to which one you're going to prefer to use. Uh, now, we do have, uh, it's called Scarab Gifts because we do run a single copy of the Scarab God. Now, for a number of reasons, this is a 5 mana 5-5 five five that keeps bringing itself back, sort of. Uh, so on its own, that's pretty powerful in certain, against certain control elements. Uh, it has this trigger at the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life and you scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. Well, it's not a zombie, and spoiler alert, there are no zombies in this deck. But you can use its last ability, well, its middle ability here, to exile a creature from your grave... Uh, from a grave, excuse me, and it creates a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. So, in response to the trigger, animate something, similarly, actually, to Unburial Rites, and that's the, that's the point, and then scry one and they lose one. So this is, if you will, sort of a fifth Gifts Ungiven that also happens to be a pretty powerful creature on its own. I don't want to run more than one, though the deck probably could. Yes, it's legendary, there's an opportunity cost for running more than one, but also it's five mana, it's so, kind of slow, and although we are a control deck, control elements abound, um, running more than one just doesn't seem right. Plus, it's a gifts deck, and in a gifts deck, we can get a single copy of a card with some ease. Now, since we're running Gifts Ungiven, we're not just going to be running these, oh look, I'm only going to get two cards, rights, and a big creature. Uh, instead, we're also going to have these little packages that we can get. So, for example, if you need to get spot removal, you have a few cards that you can get here. As you would expect, we're going to start off with four Fatal Push. I don't know that that really needs much explanation. I'm going to keep that top area open for just a little bit. Uh, however, we are only running one Path to Exile. For a number of reasons, Fatal Push is just that much better than Path to Exile. Path to Exile gives them a land, puts them ahead, yet yeah, exiles the creature and it doesn't care how big they are. Uh, we're going to have some elements to keep our opponent off of big cards anyway. Uh, but simply put, Fatal Push is just no drawback except it doesn't work on some creatures. Path to Exile works on everything, but it gives them a land, and people severely underestimate how much of a downside that is. That said, we do want to be able to get one of them, should we need it. Uh, next we have Snapcaster Mage, I'm counting it as a removal spell for obvious reasons. Goes and gets either of these two, and, and then some, quite a bit more. Uh, and then we also have Detention Sphere, which is spot removal, I suppose. This helps us deal with problem permanents um, that happen to come by. Okay, easy enough. So if you need to go and get, say, um, Gifts Ungiven for spot removal, then 
Fatal Push Path to Exile Snapcaster Mage Detention Sphere is a, a common pile, the most common pile. If you need to get mass removal, well, Gifts decks have actually already honed this part to an art. We go and get four Wrath Spells, and mine is a little different. We're going to start off with, I think the most obvious one, Supreme Verdict. Can't be countered, destroy all creatures. Ta-da! Now for the second most obvious one, <laughs> Wrath of God. Destroy all creatures, no regen. Now for the third most obvious one, <laughs> Damnation. Same as Wrath of God, except it's black. And then the fourth one, usually here you'll see a Day of Judgment, which is a strictly worse Wrath of God. Same mana cost, except the creatures can be regenerated. In my case, we're actually running Barter in Blood. Barter in Blood is here because it shores up, shores up, it helps us with Bogle's matches. So each player sacks two creatures. Obviously we're going to break the symmetry of that a little bit. We probably won't have any creatures at the time. And this, each player sacrifices two creatures helps against Bogles because they can't fetch out Dryad Arbor to save them. So they'll, they'll just lose the Dryad Arbor as well. So that's why that's there. Sorry about bumping the camera. Uh, if you're hearing me sound a little bit odd, I, I have been sick. I'm getting over it. But uh, that's probably why I sound pretty miserable. So sorry about that. Um, now, before we get onto our other packages, I will note that we do have a few uh, other options that we have up here. We have creatures that we want typically gifts for. We have Tassiker the Golden Fang, which, similarly to Scarab God, is just a giant creature that reaps huge rewards in the later game. Uh, except that this one really only costs one mana. It's a one mana, four or five. You've seen this thing destroy modern. There's a reason for that. Oh, excuse me. Uh, and then we have Lingering Souls, which is... Oh, <clears throat> oh, I'm so sorry. Lingering Souls is often, if you don't know what your fourth card is going to be for a gifts package, Lingering Souls is fine just to fill it out, because regardless of whether it hits the hand or hits the grave, you'll still get some value out of it. Um, and so it's, it's just a common fourth card to get there. Next, I am going to skip ahead just a little bit into a Planeswalker that... I need to have, but I don't want to have. And that is Lilian of the Bale. Oh sure, I want to have at least one, maybe two, but three is not my preference, especially now with the new Planeswalker Legendary rule, where I could have a Liliana uh, the Last Hope and still be okay with Liliana the Veil at the same time. However, Bogles, 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 Bogles. <laughs> <laughs> that is an underrated deck in the meta right now. Uh, yes, it loses hard to Chalice and one decks, and it can't outrace Storm, for instance. Uh, but any deck that's running four Fatal Push needs to worry about that. That said, I would like to have another, say, a Liliana Last Hope or Jace Architect of Thought. But this Edict here is is pretty powerful. Plus, one thing that Liliana does that I'm not crazy about in this style of deck. Some decks make great use of it. Mine, not quite so much, is the plus one each player discards a card. Um, it gets around Leyline. If it were target player, other than that one little quirk, it would be better, obviously, which is why the Lily that does that is five. Um, but we typically want to keep some number of cards in our hand. We are, after all, a control deck. Um, but that's okay. It's It's most of the time worth it. The fact that we control when Liliana comes out, if we don't want to start doing this symmetric discard, we just don't cast Lily yet. You know. So we still get some control over it, so it's fine, it's fine. But that said, I wish I could run more. I wish I could run other cards in that slot. Or at least some number of those slots. Now for our other interaction pieces. We have a few. We have some Hand Attack. We have Thoughtseize as a three of. Just a three of, though. Uh, I've considered bringing it up to four. We have quite a few cards that come in tapped, lands that come in tapped, such that our first turn, it's usually okay for us not to have to play a one drop. But also we have some more hand attack spells in Collective Brutality. That's part of why it's only three Thoughtseize. No Inquos, uh, but yeah, this is a little of everything. It's super good against Burn. Every mode is good against Burn. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, next, we have four copies of Spreading Seas. This will help us with Tron, it will help us a bit with the Valakut, and it just draws us a card. Sometimes this is Stone Rain. This is just plain old Stone Rain. 
uh, and it gets us a little bit ahead. We don't have a lot of card draw in this deck, you may notice. I haven't shown you any Serum Visions, and to a large extent that's because we're playing in such a hand attack heavy meta. Serum Visions is not great when people can strip your hand uh, pretty soon thereafter. I'm sorry, it's just not. Um, Next we have two copies of Shadow Doubt. You want to talk about Stone Rain. This is Stone Rain. <laughs> it's spreading seeds less per- I mean, so it, if they fetch, obviously we can cast this. They don't actually get their fetch land out, and then we draw a card. That's pretty sick. It also helps us against certain matches where they're going to be tutoring up, say, again, a Primeval Titan hits, or in response to Scape Shift. Uh, Basuju, who shelters all, won't help against Shadow of Doubt because it isn't a counterspell, yada yada yada. You get the idea. So anytime the opponent would be searching, Shadow of Doubt is great. It's in the main board because, one, it's unexpected, two, it's really necessary for certain matches. Uh, I keep bringing this up, I don't mean to sound like a broken record, we don't, this is not normally a favorite, Valakut should beat us, should destroy us. Um, and that's just the name of the game. Unless we can control them well enough and keep them off of their lands, and make their lands irrelevant. Okay. Next, lands. Easy enough, I'm just going to put all the lands in a, in a pile if you don't mind. We have uh, two Flooded Strand, and two Marsh Flats, as well as four Polluted Deltas. You can tell the most important colors in the deck are blue and black. There is some white though, so we have some fetch lands that'll go and get that. But if you want to do the count here, six get blue, six get black, four get white. Uh, and on that, we have one Godless Shrine. We have uh, two Hallowed Fountains, and we have two Watery Graves. So again, you can tell which color is least important. Uh, as for our basics, just... <laughs> that, that's it. Uh, of note here, uh, that particular island, because I'm 13. I'm a 13-year-old boy. But yeah, two islands, a plains, and two swamps. Uh, next for our other lands, are the lands that are actually interesting, I suppose. We have Celestial Colonnade. Colonnade? I'm not sure. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, enters the battlefield tapped. It's a control win condition. You have one of your lands be one of your beaters. We only have it as a one of in this deck. I'm not sure how many of these are right when Fatal Push is in the meta. Remember, Fatal Push only cares about CMC, and this is CMC zero. So that's why I'm running so few. Maybe that's not right, and if you have a suggestion, let me know, but that's why I'm only running one. Uh, anyway, when you animate it, when you, uh, when you make it a land folk for five mana, it's a 4-4 four, four flying vigilance, so that means it'll still be untapped for you to do something later on. Uh, and then we have Creeping Tar Pit, which is uh, the same. It is a 3-2, though, that animates for three, and it's unblockable. So it's a Planeswalker Slayer, is how I like to think of it. And it also just gets through with that last bit of damage. Sorcery Speed Removal will not do jack-all against it, so that's fine. But that's just the nature of Landfolk. And then, again, uh, <laughs> we hate Valakut. So, and this also gives us something against Tron, although because it's Tech Edge and not Ghost Quarter, it often comes a bit too late. Tron can go off of three, even four lands, and by that point... Tech Edge might be irrelevant. So it's it's more for Valakit and for opposing control decks, actually. Being able to shut them off of lands when we're in the driver's seat, when we're in control, is often a good place to be. Plus, against Cryptic Command decks, remember, Cryptic Command has three blue in its cost, and that is often hard for control decks to maintain. So if we can shut them off one, their, one of their blue, well, that shuts off an option entirely. Uh, next, now for our sideboard. Very quickly, a bunch of one-ups. We have Celestial Purge, which is used to fight both Blood Moon and Giant Delve creatures, as well as Death Shadow itself. We have the fourth copy of Collective Brutality, which we bring in against Burn, and uh, instant sorcery-based combo decks like Storm. We have Crucible of Worlds for... It, well, for a number of things. One, against control decks, the fact that we can keep getting our fetch lands over and over and over again basically means that we guarantee ourselves a land per turn. Also, against decks like Tron and Valakut, again, just the fact that we can use Tech Edge over and over and over and over and over again means they should not have a path to victory. Um, it could happen, though. Uh, next, we have Disenchant, 
general artifact and enchantment hate. I don't want it to be something at one mana because unfortunately that would lose to Chalice. And so, no, we're not getting the, uh, the one from Kaladesh. Uh, next we have Gideon, ally of Zendikar. <laughs> good to see you out of standard, buddy, but good to see you in here as well. It's just an inevitability card. Uh, now, you might be wondering why on earth we're running two Graph Diggers Cage. What on earth is this thing doing in a gift stack? Because remember, players can't cast cards in graveyards or libraries, so we can't cast our unburial rights. Well, there are only two, so there's a chance that we don't have them and we can go off anyway. There are some matches where it's so important to shut down our opponent's ability to go through the library or the grave, like Elves, for instance, that we still have to, or just any collected company deck, or even decks like Past and Flames decks, that it's just that important that we have to do this. We have to have it. Okay, now that said, bear in mind that the Scarab God does not technically reanimate the card, it exiles it, and then makes a 4-4. So, in that case, your Scarab God becomes your Unburial Rites. So you can actually get away with the Graft Digger's Cage and still have that. Alright, next we happen to run uh, <laughs> four copies of Leyline of Sanctity. Uh, very simply, it gives us Hexproof if it's in the opening hand, and it's actually castable in this deck if we need to. So this is just something to help us fight Storm, which is, I'm glad that Storm is seeing some prominence again, uh, even if it's not my favorite deck to play against. I like that it's a part of the meta. That said, we have to do something against them, and lo and behold, Leyline is where it's at. Next, we have Knight of Souls Betrayal. All creatures get minus one, minus one. You'd expect it to be legendary, of course, and lo, it is, for four mana. The only thing that this does to us is that it shuts off our own Lingering Souls, so you might take out Lingering Souls for this. But otherwise, it does absolutely nothing, absolutely jack-all to us. And so, if you're playing against a lot of low-to-the-ground aggro decks, a Knight of Souls Betrayal, if you can make it that long, is, or can be anyway, pretty devastating. And then lastly, for Affinity, we also bring in Stony Silence as a 3 of. Stop those Ravagers, stop those Equips, etc. And just stop Mox Opal in general. And there you have it. This is, this is Scarab Gifts, a T1 Glistener Elf brew that I should note, I should have mentioned this at the very beginning, I'm sorry I didn't. Uh, this is actually one that was requested by Christopher Long, who's one of our patrons. Um, if you want to go and support the channel, Patreon is a good way to do it. One of the reward levels is that you get a deck tech every month based on a card, and he requested one on the Scarab God. And yeah, it is a little odd. He requested a card and it's only a one of in the deck, but then again, it's also a five of in the deck <laughs> because of gifts I'm given. Uh, and it, it's it's pretty core to the game plan. As Umburial writes number five, oh, well, number six? Uh, how do you want to count that? Um, and it, it has come up, and I don't think I've ever lost once that has resolved. It is an extremely powerful card. Uh, but yeah, if, if you want your own deck tech, then feel more than free. Uh, otherwise, T1 Glistener Elf, signing off. Take care, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.